Hello guys, I am Peter from Build a Boeing and this is an OEM panel, uh, a panel from a real aircraft. This is the audio control panel from um, either a Boeing 727 or uh, the classic 737. I'm a bit unsure. I think it's from the 727. Uh, it's located in the pedestal, or at least uh, on the 737 it's located on the pedestal. And uh, you control your microphones up here and your speakers down here, what, what you want to hear. And you can uh, select sources. And then when you have selected them, you can turn this volume up and down uh, to uh, get the level you want. I've only interfaced one thing from this uh, panel, and that's the switch down here, which returns to sensor if you push it to radio, whereas if it's intercom, it stays on. And I'm using it so when I push down here, uh, it triggers a push to talk button on VATSIM so I can transmit and then it allows my relays, the sound from my headset, cuts inside headset, to be transmitted to VATSIM. Then I have other switches and other microphones for a handheld microphone and the same for the first officer side. However, I do have a problem because when I push this down, when I release it again, it isn't released, uh, the signal keeps uh, transmitting or um, the, the connection, when I push down here there's a connection and when I release it the connection isn't released. And I don't know why, uh, I have a few suspicions, but I'm just about to take it apart to see if, uh, if it's a malfunction in the switch or what is wrong. And I thought I'd just do a video about this panel so you can see what's inside a panel like this. On the back side, uh, you can see two plugs, they're called Canon plugs. Uh, let me just say this is a Gables um, unit and it's called 3737-05 uh, and it's uh, I reckon it's from 1992 uh, so it's been flying around for like um, 30 years or so. Uh, on the back you have two Canon plugs, a male here and a female and Canon plugs C-A-N-N-O-N they are pretty hard to find so I'm just uh, using DuPont wires that I put into these pins and then uh, I secure them with some metal wire I bent them down here and then metal wire and then they continue. That keeps them in place but of course this is facing downwards and it's a problem if you just put wires on they can fall out so you need to to take that into consideration okay let's get this beast open the four screws here and then there are four screws two here and two on the other side and we can just take this off and you can have a look inside and it looks like this look at that cable management that is very neat but of course also this is a professional product so it should be neat and that the kind of mess I normally make. And you can take this off as well. This is one big piece. It goes off like this. And then we can have a closer look on what's inside here. Now, from my understanding, uh, these switches here, which is the one we have here, they are, you can, you can push them, and if you look, uh, let me see, there's some of them which you can see from the side here. If I push it, you can see there's a mechanic that turns on and off, and then I can turn it, and I reckon that's the potential meter down here where you can turn the volume up and down. So as far as I know, all the signal processing is happening in this side, this box. There's some audio coming in, and it's processed down here. You can turn on and off, and then a signal comes out again. Um, somewhere and goes into the aircraft. Whereas uh, if you have a simulator, all you do is you send a signal of the value of either a switch or potentiometer to your computer and then all your uh, signal processing is going on inside your computer. So there's a bit of difference here and down here I reckon you have amplifiers. Might be a bit difficult to see but somewhere down here you have two amplifiers as well. So everything is happening inside the box and that's why it's, it's a bit difficult to interface to um, flight sim because it's two different ways of doing things. Here's inside the box in the, in, a, in a cockpit with the software, it's inside the computer. So you need to kind, kind of take everything from here inside the computer. And I don't know if you can do that. Okay, and um, I've also taken the faceplate off here. Um, normally, you can just get it off here and you can see what looks behind. Uh, there are two versions of uh, faceplates. This is with small LEDs here all the way across, and there are some here as well. Uh, other versions, the lightning is inside this plate. This is just plastic, uh, painted plastic. And then you can see small holes for all the LEDs. If you have the other version where uh, the light actually is uh, inside this faceplate, 
then you have a small plus, a small crust somewhere, which is where it connects to the power on the main panel. I'll just screw this, uh, tighten this again, so that it doesn't come loose. And I can do the rest later. Like that. Okay, so my problem is this switch here. And you might be able to see it's just a regular switch, but with uh, some nice tidy wiring. And I'm, uh, I'm considering if I should replace the switch. Uh, and I've brought a new one here. And uh, on-off, uh, it's in the back, you cannot see it. It's just a normal uh, on-off on switch. Now, of course, this has this is on off on with return for both sides. I should actually get one like the one you have in the, in the APU where it um, it stays on in the intercom position up here and uh, is released down there. You can see it's a bit tight. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm even able to fit it there. Um, and I was just about to take take the, the whole thing apart when it hit me. Um, my problem is actually that it stays on, but if you look, listen carefully, I'll just take it close to the microphone here and you might be able to hear it. On, and then when I release it here, you can hear the click again. Off. So it clicks when it goes off as well, so that's why I'm considering it might not be the switch, but something to do with the electronics here instead. So I just found a multimeter uh, here with two wires and just connect them to the switch here and see if uh, my theory here is correct. So now when I flick this down, you, we should hear a beep from the multimeter. Get it closer to the microphone. You can hear that. But also, see what happens when I release the switch again. Then the beep disappears. So apparently it's not the switch that's faulty, but instead it's something in the electronics here that doesn't work properly. Uh, that perhaps there's a relay in here that needs power and uh, I have found a wiring diagram for this, but uh, to be honest, I don't understand it fully. Uh, this unit might need 24 volts or 28 volts or whatever, uh, needs some power more than just power for the, for the backlighting, perhaps even 48 and um, I don't have that. So either I should, powered the whole thing up uh, and let it consume a lot of power for the amplifiers that I'm not using. Or I should go with a plan B that doesn't suit me very well, but might be the best and easiest solution. And that is to bypass the whole system. So I'll solder these three, three wires off. Then I'll make a hole somewhere down here. Let's say there. I'll make a hole for um, an extra connector and I think I'll use aviation plugs like this, because they can be screwed. Uh, the other part comes here. You put that on. See if I can get it to fit. There we are. And then you tie it together here, so it doesn't come off. Because one of the things I hate in the cockpit is things coming off, things getting loose. So I think I just start soldering this and then bypass the whole system in order to get my push to talk signal uh, Transmit it correctly to the rest of the car. And so that's it. The switch now has new wires and they are running along with the other wires over here to a plug on the back there. I'm gonna make a label here that says PTT push to talk. Only one thing left before we close up this and uh, that is of course testing that the, the plug and the wire are actually working. So I'm gonna use the other part as well so that we have everything connected. There we are. And then I have a multimeter here, and then let's just flick the switches, see, that works, and upwards, that works as well. 
so that took approximately two three hours uh, that's why i've shortened the video down a bit i don't know if this was of any help or interest to you but uh, i had a problem and then i solved it by putting in new wires and i thought you might as well see it while doing so uh, i hope you find it somewhat interesting and um I have to do this with the panel that I have over here as well at some time, at some point. Uh, I'll do a separate video on that when I come to that. It'll probably take me a few years before I get started on that panel. Anyway, I'm going to close it for now. I'm Peter from Builder Boeing. You guys take care. Bye-bye.